Hello and welcome to another episode of me painting again. Oh yeah, we're painting again and this time we're using interactive Atelier acrylic paints. And we're using a reference picture that I created as well, of a waterfall. Um, if you want to see that, you can go on to my Facebook page where I posted it and also the finished painting is also on the page as well. Or you can also see it on Instagram where I am also posting pictures. All sorts of pictures, not just paintings. I put everything on Instagram. I kind of see it like a, a digital sketchbook in a way, so I just chuck stuff on there. And Facebook I tend to put on what I think you might be interested in. Um, so it's up to you. <laughs> so I'm making a yellow to start with making a yellow, a warm yellow. I want some cad yellow, yellow ochre, cadmium red to make a nice warm yellow for the background where some of the warm light is hitting. So I'm, uh, yes, you're right, I am painting on the floor. <laughs> it's easy to film painting on the floor, actually. And uh, also, Quite comfy. I'm actually quite comfy doing it. But if you're not filming yourself, probably better at a table with a, sort of an angle on the table so you can see your painting. Otherwise, you have to stand up and look down at it. <laughs> as long as you can see the whole painting, it's not. Yeah. You want it at a slight angle so you can see the whole painting. You know what I mean. So I'm throwing in the yellow here in the uh, top part where the light is hitting still. It's going through a load of trees and leaves and things and it's got like a yellowy glow. I do get that in the woods. I've, I've been noticing that a lot now. See I do a lot of outdoor painting and then I bring that into my indoor painting. <laughs> so actually this uh, painting that we're doing, this one, um, is based on a photograph that I took when I climbed down a waterfall. Yeah. So I'm just throwing in a bit more yellow, a bit more of the cad yellow. I don't want any blocks of colour in this really, um, I try and break everything up and I'm using a bluish grey card, it's a, it's a cool grey card that I bought from my local art shop and I just chopped it down to this size which I thought was about the right size because I was trying to make as many sheets out of it as possible um, but when I was doing it I thought I could do with a sheet that's kind of almost squarish. And this is what I did. So I always try and use the big brush, the biggest brush that you can use. That's what I try and use. Get a bit of paper towel and then uh, dry the brush. And on the plate, got some ultramarine blue there, some sap green, and some dark, um, that's a uh, burnt umber, burnt umber. And then around the other side of the palette, as you can see the whole, well, plate, there's uh, yellow ochre, cadmium red, and burnt sienna on the other side. I haven't introduced any white yet. <laughs> I'm just supping on a... Uh, Double chocolate mocha. <laughs> it's a good art drink, that is. If you want to be a true artist, a double chocolate mocha is the way to go. <laughs> Always go for a big drink, a big cup. Or oh, hot chocolate works well, I find. Um, I tend to paint better when I'm, when I'm drinking a hot chocolate. <laughs> So this is just a mix that I've created with blue, brown, and green. 
for my dark. Notice I won't use any white at all yet. <laughs> I don't like to use any white at the beginning of my painting anymore. I try not to use it at all, if I can. Especially when I'm painting a bit thinner like this. I'm not slapping on thick paint, it's quite thin. It's thick enough to cover, as long as it covers the card. Well, covers it as well as possible. Because it's a nice bluish grey, I don't mind if any of it shows through really. So you'll notice um, some of the greyish, bluish, brownish, greenish colour that I use has mixed a bit with yellow because it's still wet. And that's alright because then that sends those bits back and I don't mind that. I just wet, wet the brush when I want to spread it out a bit quicker. I don't want it to be too wet though because I don't want the card to uh, start cockling too much. The odd quick spray just to make sure it's not drying. <laughs> so we're really just blocking in this first I don't know, ten minutes maybe. Just blocking in colour, going for the darks, and then uh, when all the darks are filled in, you can go on to the next stage. But it's good to have a base coat. Block in this base coat to start with. And I tend to paint everything in this kind of way. Um, mostly, anyway. Because acrylics, you can wait for them to dry and then paint on top of them. They're, they are really good for this sort of technique that I use. This is actually the way I paint with gouache. <laughs> Same sort of thing. It's just I thought I'd use acrylics because then uh, my underlayer will dry solid and it won't mix together or anything when I put the water on top. That was my reason for using acrylics. I always think of the medium, uh, what, what behaviour the medium has and then I'll choose what medium I want to use because of that. what kind of how I feel as well changes my mood on what I want to use because sometimes if I'm a bit tired a bit a bit a bit of a long day then I might just want to use watercolor a nice soft watercolor or maybe I'll just want to use the computer to paint so I can just paint and then turn it off and go to bed <laughs> But I try to keep to a set of principles and uh, the principles that I use means it doesn't matter what materials I use. <laughs> so I just threw that blue on and then just mixed it in just to get it blocked in a bit quicker. I get excited, you see, when I, get <laughs> when I know the next stage, so I'm desperate to get this stage done. Get it done and blocked in. So I'm thinking about the water. Thinking about where the water is going to be going. And where, where I need to leave it to be light. Because the rocks on one side are light. And then this side, it's all quite dark. <laughs> yeah, like I said, this place was uh, <laughs> was where I went to take some reference pictures, and uh, and there was this bridge I was on, quite high up, looking down at the water. There I was on the bridge, my camera out. And I was uh, getting myself ready to take a picture, and uh, part of my camera fell into the waterfall. <laughs> 
and I was like, ah, oh. um, it was one of those rings that go on the end of your lens to stop the light in it. And I looked down off this bridge and I thought, do I really need this ring on the uh, lens? Can I live without it? And then I thought, you know what? I think I can climb down there and get it. <laughs> so I uh, climbed down and then uh, I crouched down to pick it up. And there I saw the waterfall I'm painting now. Um, something very similar anyway. Uh, I haven't changed it. I've changed it a bit, not much though. And, uh, and I was like, wow, that's amazing. Look at the way the light is hitting only part of it. So I retrieved my uh, lens ring, <laughs> put it on the lens, and then took some pictures of the waterfall. And I thought, that would make a good painting. I'd like to paint that. <laughs> so this is, this is me doing that. And, uh, and that was when I realised, I've got to climb out of here. Huh. It's easier to climb down, but getting out, um, it's going to be a challenge. <laughs> so... Put my camera in my camera bag. Looked up at the bridge, thinking, hmm, this is going to be awkward. How am I going to get up to there? Uh, I know, if I put my foot in where the trees are, maybe I can grab onto the bridge. Because there was a big root coming down. And uh, the first go, <laughs> I've put my foot on the root, sort of did a double kind of hit with my feet and then jumped and I missed the bridge. <laughs> and I was back in there again thinking, mm, maybe I shouldn't have climbed down here. <laughs> and then I had another go, just drinking some mocha. And I had another go, and uh, and I managed it. And I uh, climbed out. I felt like a hero. <laughs> you know, I would never have got that photo if I didn't climb down there. And some things are fate. <laughs> it was fate for me to do that. And I was able to get this picture to be able to paint this and then do a bit of an episode that hopefully you'll enjoy. I'm just blocking in the out a bit. Just blocking it all in. Just washing my brush. Drying it on a paper towel. Now I need to think about the other side of the rocks. So burnt sienna that is, burnt sienna. And a bit of red. So I'm always thinking warm, sunlight, warm. <laughs> So, where the sun's hitting, I always put a bit of yellow and red in. Or one of them, anyway. Sometimes, if I'm using gouache, sometimes the cadmium yellow works really well. Cadmium yellow deep, I should say. It's got a nice orangeyness to it. I'm just throwing in this warm area. 
Put in the uh, burnt sienna mix with the yellow and the red. red, a bit more of the burnt sienna. And I'm putting in some dark at the base of these rocks because that's where the water goes underneath a little bit. <laughs> See this uh, cliff kind of side that we're uh, looking at now which is nice and warm. That's where I climbed. <laughs> I climbed up there and imagine a bridge over the top of us. And that's where where we were. <laughs> so I'm looking at the uh, dark areas where the light isn't getting and I'm just putting that in. And then I'm just playing a little bit, putting some dark in here and there. So this is our base layer, so we can go over the top of this with sunlight colours and things. So I wet my brush back into the burnt sienna again. And then a little bit of red. I'm thinking about the water. Now, this water, you could see through it and... Uh, you could see the the stony kind of muddy type surface underneath <laughs> and the water being transparent it, it was when it was clear as well you could see it clearly clear, like straight through so I tried to uh, keep a uh, fresh kind of brush stroke there Because I don't always want to do blue water or green water. Do the water that's that's there. Okay. Now we're grabbing some blue, a bit of white, a bit of green. So we're making a cool color. This cool green colour for the land that's around here. So everything in the dark area, <laughs> everything in the dark is cool. It's not getting the warm sun rays, it's just getting a little bit of the ambient light in the dark. So I'm going to keep it all cool and dark. And that way we'll get a nice contrast hopefully <laughs> between the shadow cool areas and the uh, bright sunny areas that's the hope anyway just a little bit of the burnt umber in with it Let's start creating a bit more shape to the the background trees. There's actually a little bit of yellow coming off my brush when I'm doing this. Then I have to tap over it to dull it down again. <laughs> I should really have just washed my brush, but you get a bit lazy. <laughs> there we go. Get that yellow off the brush. More the white, but more the blue and green. Still keeping it cool, keeping that cool bluey green colour. I 
And I didn't think that was showing up too well, so I went a little bit brighter. I'm getting that land shape. Like I said, keeping it cool. So what we don't want is just darkness with nothing. Because <laughs> that would be a bit boring. And uh, sometimes when you take photos, that is what you get in the dark. Because it exposes to the light areas and then all you get is in the dark black. <laughs> But when you're looking and you're seeing the really nice, dark, cool shades in amongst the dark, you think, oh great, that's going to look awesome on photo. You take the photo and it's just black. So as a painter, we have to try and remember things. And uh, also when I'm taking pictures sometimes, I'll expose it to the dark and expose one to the light so then I can put the picture together so I can see both but I don't always remember to do that and it's a, it's a bit more of a hassle <laughs> so using the cool colours I'm starting to put in the indication of a few leaves and things behind there just picking them out Just using the corner of the brush. You can create all kinds of little leaves and things with the corner of that brush. And it's blue and green, so it's cool. Nice and cool. And don't fill it all in. Leave dark areas as well. So that way you get a depth. If you, fill, if you filled it all in and just kept going and going, you'd lose your depth. It would just be one full block of blue. <laughs> so I'm using a watercolour brush now. <laughs> just use whatever brushes you've got. It doesn't really matter. I tend to find flat brushes are the best. Or filbert brushes myself. I use whatever, I use round brushes, it doesn't bother me, as long as it's got some hairs on it. <laughs> Most of my brushes are synthetic that I'm using. So I've got a nice blue, now that blue was made with ultramarine blue, see that cad red go into it. There we go. There's a bit of cadmium red, ultramarine blue, cadmium red, and a bit of brown and a bit of white. So we're making a um, a cool blue. It's a bit dull. <laughs> I don't want anything too bright. Not in this area. This is the shadow area. Cold shadow. And then some of the light, you get a bit of reflection on the water. And then, so you're just letting that water just pull out. It just drips over. So I'm quite, quite delicate really with my brush, quite soft with the brush. I felt it wasn't quite bright enough in areas, so I just lightened it a little bit. Because otherwise it, you wouldn't be able to see it. 
but you can be very subdued with your paintings and uh, when you view them in normal light um, you can see all these little nuances in your work so just letting that brush drag down because that dark is nice and dry it isn't lifting or anything Trying to think about the water falling over. Sitting back, having a look, thinking about it, and then keep going again. <laughs> When you take pictures of water, you can see it all in like clumps almost, which I find interesting. I don't really like the slow shutter water that people take, because <laughs> it doesn't look right. Because when you look at water, it never looks like that. It always sort of, to me, it looks like it's in like clumps and going psh, psh, psh. <laughs> But it's sort of magical, isn't it, when you do these cold areas? The water's dribbling down these rocks, splashing. I I do like the uh, the magic of what happens in the dark areas of the forests and things. I just like the water pool. See how the water came together on that one. It does that as well. So just sitting back having a look. Have a look at the whole picture. Think about your next move. It's like a game of chess painting. <laughs> Thinking about your next move. Areas that you felt needed a bit more to them. Just hold the brush in different ways. Let it roll. And let the water just flow off the brush. Still in the dark. Whenever you're in, your, in the dark area, you keep to the cool colours. And whenever you come out, where the, the sun's hitting it, you go for your warm colours. This is what this painting's all about, really. <laughs> warm and cool. And that, I, a lot of the time, that's how I paint now. I'm always thinking in my head, warm colours, cool colours. It's funny because you get told that. <laughs> I got told that a um, long time ago. And uh, it never actually really sunk in properly. I didn't really understand it. <laughs> um, well, with painting though, you're always learning, aren't you? So there's some light hitting the rock here. So we'll bring that out with some light. Remember what I said, the, the sunlight, the yellow, the red, and then the burnt sienna, which would be your, your base colour. I do enjoy painting on paper or canvas and stuff. <laughs> I've done quite a lot of uh, digital painting re recently, and I do enjoy it, but it's not the same as painting on a piece of paper or a piece of card. It's not, it just doesn't feel the same. I suppose it's not got the 
the artistic kind of romance to it. <laughs> There's nothing better than getting a brush and painting, is there? I really enjoy it. I get really excited about doing them as well. start thinking oh yes I'm gonna paint this is gonna be amazing I can't wait to do it even when the painting has become really difficult and hard and you don't feel like <laughs> you get it anywhere you're not you don't feel like you're improving you always are you're always getting better you're always improving and you're always enjoying it and you've got to think You've got a little bit better, even if your painting doesn't work, you've done some practice. That's what I try and tell myself sometimes. You get a bit frustrated because you see other people doing their paintings and it all works and it looks fantastic and yours looks awful. And you're like, well, why is theirs working and mine isn't? <laughs> and you just have to think, well, they've probably done more paintings than me or they've got bit of artistic talent and maybe I haven't so you just have to work a bit harder and do another one there's always another painting in you <laughs> I always think there's always one more there's always another one you can always rectify the errors you made on the first one on the next one so don't, don't worry about painting just keep painting that's all you need to do just keep doing it and each painting you'll get better and better don't lose the mojo <laughs> keep it keep it going because you'll find the ones that think to themselves, ah, I'm just going to keep going anyway. It's hard, it's challenging, but I'm just going to do another one, you know, just to get a bit better, and then a bit better, to learn a bit more. Before you know it, people will start saying, oh, can you paint this for me? Can you paint that for me? And you could earn a few quid on the side. <laughs> You could do paintings for people as presents, and uh, or you just do it for your own personal enjoyment. So I'm just adding a bit of the burnt sienna and light colours, and just building up these rocks and things. What is good fun? If you've never tried it, painting outside. <laughs> I would recommend using, if you're using acrylics, you need a retarder in your paint to stop them from drying out. Because when you're outside, acrylics dry so fast. It's a bit of a, a, bit of a struggle. So what I tend to use is gouache because uh, they well, even when they're dry they're still um, like because they're like watercolour you can still use them so that's what I tend to use watercolour and gouache when I'm painting outside or oil paints work as well it's just again the disadvantage of oils is carrying your stuff <laughs> it's quite heavy and you need all this stuff with you <laughs> And uh, I do do it, um, and sometimes it's worth the extra effort to take in the pot chard box or your easel or whatever. Sometimes you just want to carry a sketchbook, a few paints, a little bottle of water, and that's it. And there's your gouache set, <laughs> and you can get out there with that. And I like doing that.
I didn't really think about using gouache outside until I saw an uh, um, artist, uh, Nathan Fawkes, using it. When I did his course on schoolism and I saw him out there using his gouache, I was like, oh, well, that looks good. I think I'll do that. So we're just adding some little leaves and things down here. There's all sorts of sort of hanging type plants. Actually, in real life, <laughs> it was just a load of dead looking roots hanging down. So I wanted to change that to give a bit more colour to it. Because otherwise this side, this rock side, would be just all brown. <laughs> that would be a bit boring. So I added this. When I was playing on the computer, I added all these bits of uh, grassy type bits and leaves and things and plants, just to add a bit more interest into it. Just a little bit of a greeny brown there. A bit more of the brown, brown and blue. Pull these darks in here. So I'm sort of sitting back having a look at the whole painting. I quite like where the uh, light's coming now. And uh, getting a bit of white, a bit of the red, a bit of the yellow. The yellow ochre's got sort of a goldenness to it. And then adding the cad yellow. Now maybe some of the light hits there. Some of the, uh, the rock is a bit more reflective than others. The brush is quite dry, so the paint breaks as it's uh, being applied. So if you use a lot of water with your acrylics, then it'll behave a little bit differently. I'm just smudging it a bit with my finger. And I'm sitting back having a look again. <laughs> Grabbed a bit of yellow, a bit of the pure cad yellow. Throwing a bit of light in some of these areas. Not all of it. Just brightening up some of it. Put a few leaves in. <laughs> Lost quite a lot of the yellow on that bit then. I just picked up some yellow from the actual card and then as, as you're painting you start losing a lot of the paint and, and use the other side of the brush no, it just adds a bit more to that doesn't it a bit more light to it Washing the brush. Using a paper towel to dry it. <laughs> Sitting back having a look. Now I need a bit more detail in that dark area. A 
They're blue and white. <laughs> yeah, like I said, I, I did do this on the computer. And uh, when I did it, I added uh, a little Captain Hook <laughs> in the painting. And I also added the Peter Pan flying. But in this one, I, as I was painting it, I thought, um, I'll leave it more as just a scene without <laughs> Peter Pan and Captain Hook in it. <laughs> I did consider it putting him in. So I'm just putting a little bit of um, indication of leaves in that dark area. Bit of the green, bit of the blue. Remember, cool, keeping it cool. Some brown, and I grabbed a bit of blue, mixed it with a bit of the bluey white. Maybe there's a surface you can just about see there. Just wash the brush again. Get some blue and brown. Get quite a, blue and brown makes black, so you can make a nice dark using blue and brown. I wanted to darken this area. I'm thinking this bit, um, there isn't as much light getting to it. So I can darken it behind the water there. Some areas of this rock I thought I could darken as well. bit more of the green, green and blue, add in some more detail in there, just indication of all kinds of things growing in there. <laughs> when I was sat on this bank once and I was trying to paint the water near the, near the uh, trees, my eyes were like, what do I start with? There's just millions and millions and millions of leaves everywhere. <laughs> And I was like, um, I guess I'll just paint loads of leaves. So I just started dabbing the brush all over the place and it seemed to create an indication of leaves because you, there's no way. <laughs> when, you, when you're out painting, you, you just get blown away sometimes of how much is there and there's, you only have so much time. So now we're just putting in the where there's a water line, where the water is reaching the, uh, the edge there. And I've got sort of a bluey, bluey colour, bluey red. Grabbed a bit more of the blue. Got a bit of light to uh, show that there's water dropping down there splashing a bit now I don't use any pure white in this painting no pure white is used <laughs> if you use a pure white paint in a painting you're overexposing it and there's nothing wrong with that, um, if that's your intention. Just, um, just a warning. <laughs> I used my uh, colour there just to uh, do the little shapes on top of the water, but it's a little bit too bright, so. I noticed when I was doing it, it was too bright, but I carried on. Because <laughs> I thought to myself, eh, I could just use a bit of brown and blue and go over the top of it, and that'll knock it down a bit. And that's exactly what I'm doing now. A little bit of brown and blue. 
and just going over the top of it to send it backwards I don't want that to stand out <laughs> I want there to be things going on in there but not too much okay now I'm uh, grabbing some white with a little bit of red and a little bit of yellow in it a uh, bit of blue a bit of red there was a tiny bit of yellow ochre in there as well and then some white and that's going to be our water so the water's falling and causing a splash here so in the light we go lighter <laughs> and warmer so I put the red in the uh, in this to keep it warm because white as, as it is is quite cold see all those little marks that I put in there when you get water hitting it kind of creates bubbles that go further along <laughs> I noticed that when I was sat painting it when I was painting a different waterfall and then I'm creating the uh, shape of all the little little swells that catch a bit of light in the nice warm part of the water just using little rocking motions to uh, to create that The water's flowing towards us. And we have one foot either side. <laughs> well, we did have. I'm putting little splashes in, little dots, um, that's, that breaks into the uh, coolness now. Because the light, the warm light, is hit there, so we can uh, we can bring this out. And this is something that can easily be overdone as well. So a little warning. <laughs> Polite notice. <laughs> you can easily overdo this. So try to uh, be, be a little bit stingy with your water. And then uh, take your time and sit back and have a look. I remember once when I went to uh, take pictures of waterfalls and uh, I went to this place called Ingleton Falls and it was a really interesting place some great falls there but the day that I went it had rained so hard the waterfalls were well they were fierce <laughs> so my uh photos well they weren't what I was expecting <laughs> I didn't really want um, huge gushing waterfalls like they were that day interesting though As you can see how the the water changes in the light. It takes on the, the sunlight in, in reflections. So I'm just putting a little bit more of the white and yellow and 
make it a bit brighter now. To make it really, really show up, put a bit more of the sunlight into my colour. And catching some of those dots as well with my sunlight colour. Letting that blob and fall and splash. Thinking about the water splashing down. See, there's more that splashes down in that area than these two sort of bits. light on top of these as well here and there just to bring some of those areas out a bit there's some water that goes around there and then I sit back have a look see if I've got everything Having a look around the painting, see if anything needs a bit more, maybe a bit more light, so everyone even lighter, a bit more of the cad yellow in with that colour now, white cad yellow, tiny bit of red, so really light now. those little splashes a bit of light on the rock I thought they needed a bit more light those little specks where the light has broken through just washing my brush Just sitting back, having a look again, <laughs> creating a bit more colour, a bit more of the white. See, I'm really enjoying it, and uh, like I was saying, it's really easy to overdo, and I feel myself wanting to do more and more and more. <laughs> And I have to tell myself to hold back. And I think, oh well, I'll put some more leaves in. I need to do something. <laughs> so I think I'll put some leaves in. I'll use this colour. It's a bit different to the other yellows I've used. I had a bit of variety in there. Sitting back, having a look. Still, still doing more. <laughs> Looking around the painting. What could I do? Created a bit of land jutting out there. Sitting back. Having a look again. Wash my brush. <laughs> Give the brush a rest. Wash it. 
dry it on a paper towel. <laughs> I go into more colour. I think, oh, what else can I do? I know. I'll get a little bit of the colour and I'll create some spray. So I'm just flicking some paint on little bits um you can see not you can't see it very well on camera but you can see some little fine yellow bits now they could be flies they could be bits in the air now to add a bit of uh, distance in this we'll create a, a bit of light hitting some leaves in front so the sun is hitting this part this is a further forward we can do that we can imagine these are quite close to us in the sunlight and they're lit up because they're in front of the darkness the cool dark and it kind of balances the painting a bit because you have like that big rock on one side and the other side there's nothing really there but now there's a little bit of a leaf a few leaves changing the green adding a little bit more And that's it. That's the finished painting. Uh, thanks very much for watching this one. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you at another one. Cheers. Bye.